Hi, and welcome to this section of the Differential Equations Tutor. Uh, here in this section, we have a really complicated sounding title. Uh, this section, we're going to talk about linear independent solutions uh, and the Ronskin test uh, there. So what we're going to do is learn about some things that, that really can help us characterize the solutions of this differential equations. And the majority of this lesson here is going to center around what we're going to, to lead up to. I'll just give you a road map so you can kind of see the big picture. What I'm going to do is explain a little bit about uh, everything we've sort of summarized, everything we've learned up to this point as far as solutions to homogeneous equations, solutions to non-homogeneous equations. Just really simple kind of overview stuff that I know that you remember from the last section. And then what we're going to do is start to talk in detail about the solution set that comes about and, and in specific using what we call this Ronskin test to determine if what we really have in front of us really is truly the general solution of the equation. So that's what we're leading up to. We're, we're really focusing on a laser focus here in this section on understanding this Ronskin test. Now before you get too wrapped up in Ronskin, it sounds really, really hard. Uh, it's named after a person. So Ronskin just, to me anyway, sounds really difficult, but I promise you once we get into it, what I'll do is I'll explain what it is, show you how to use it. It's not going to be that hard. So what we're going to do in this section is I'll give you a little lecture, what we're using it for, why is it important, kind of give you the overview couple of sort of quick examples on how you would do it. But then in the next section, what we're going to do is roll up our sleeves and really apply it to a good number of problems, just so you make sure you understand, because you're guaranteed to have these kinds of questions on your test. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so let's do a little bit of review, but when I do these reviews, I really want you to watch them because I'm kind of leading you by the hand, so to speak, up to a very important conclusion. So don't fast forward past this part, even if you've already seen this before. All right, so in general, we talked about this a lot in the last section. Remember that we have, in general, we have these, the general form of a differential equation, a linear differential equation, is what we call non-homogeneous, right? And that means that you have the stuff on the left-hand side, but on, that on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we have a function of time. That's what we call non-homogeneous. And we talked in, a, in great detail in the last section that in general, in general, Uh, for non-homogeneous uh, equation, which we are going to refer to from now on as n, because writing non-homogeneous is just really cumbersome. So parentheses n is going to mean non-homogeneous. Uh, the solution, the solution is of the following form. This should not be anything new, different, or anything to stress you out because we've already talked about it quite a bit. But I'm going to lead you up to a conclusion. So we said that the solution in general of a differential equation that's non-homogeneous is going to be CH of T plus P of T. And just to refresh your memory, uh, this guy is the solution this is basically the contribution uh, of the non-homogeneous part of the equation. So remember, uh, of the homogeneous part. Non-homogeneous means that on the right-hand side of the equal sign, you have a pure function of time. Uh, but if you take that away and just stick a zero there, then we have what we call the homogeneous version. So when you solve this general equation, you just always get a solution of this form, where you end up getting a, a, a constant times a bunch of little functions um, how many of these little functions that you end up having, h1, h2, and h3, we talked about in the last section, is really just going to depend on how many derivatives you have, what, what the highest derivative is in your differential equation. But this is the solution to the homogeneous version. So if we take our original equation, strip off the right-hand side, the function of time, stick a zero in there, this is really the solution of that. This guy is what we call a particular solution. solution to the non-homogeneous version. So if you really think about it for a second, since this is the solution to the homogeneous version, then if I take uh, this guy here, if I plug it back in to the, no, the uh, homogeneous version of this differential equation, the, the, the version that has a zero on the right hand side, it will satisfy that equation, right? This little function that pops up that we did some examples in the last section, if you take this and plug it into the full version, the, the uh, non-homogeneous version of the differential equation, then you'll, it'll satisfy this guy. 